Hello, good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, good evening, guys. Good evening. Um, good evening, Rodrigo. Um, okay, guys. Uh, I'm not going to turn on my camera uh, just for today because I'm sick. So um, we're going to have the camera off, okay? Um, guys, um, we're going to start with the class that got respond for today. Uh, if you notice, well, this is going to be the last week uh, with you. And um, I had to mention something, probably you know that information uh, from the message that you received from the staff, uh, the staff of English Corporativo. Um, and I just need to inform you that this coming uh, Wednesday, we're not going to be working. Uh, by the way, we are going to um, cover that class this coming Friday and Friday is going to be the end of this course, okay? So uh, this is just the information that I want to share with you. So now we're going to start with the class. Um, I don't know if um, any of you, well, if you remember on Wednesday, we were developing a, an activity. It was a, a conversation. And I said on a Tuesday, I mean, a Thursday, that I was just going to give you an opportunity in order to participate in tonight's class. So I don't know if any of you had uh, prepared for develop your activity, the uh, uh, the conversation. Any of you wants to participate? The ones that didn't uh, develop the the homework from this coming Thursday, okay? So I don't know if you are ready now in order to participate. Yes, no. Yes, teacher, and me with Mylene. Mylene, oh, okay, wonderful. So um, eh, go ahead. So just let me know when you're going to start. Go ahead. Mylene, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Ready? Hello, Maylene. You are back from your holidays. How was your trip? Hi. Um, hi, Miss Mary. Uh, yeah, I went uh, on a trip to Mexico and I visited some beautiful places. So, well, mm -hmm. What was the best beach you ever visited? Oh, mm, one of them was Cancun. It was my favorite. Um, the sea has beautiful uh, colors, and it's like a blue and green. That beach is so incredible. I love it. Uh, the Caribbean are perfect for the practice of uh, snorkel, diving in caves. And also, um, cold, um, yeah, you can go. Ahead, you can go there, but the that skates are uh, are known as as uh, cenotes. So, my trip to Mexico was excellent. Um, Cancun and Tulum, archaeological um, ruins next to the sea those uh were my best roads and um, and you uh they told me that you traveled to spain yes but i only went to visit a friend house i love it spain i have never been and it was a very beautiful experience the plaza de españa sevilla is a beautiful is an architectural complex that was built between 40 and, and 1929. It is World War, say the open head in that place. Wow, uh, that sounds awesome. I would like to travel there. Well, 
in maybe next year, right? So um, I think that your trip was very good. Um, I had to go to my mother, is, is waiting for me, right? So, Rosemary, uh, she's in the car. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye. Good luck. Ah, thank you. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Finish, teacher. Okay, good. Wonderful. It was a good conversation. Excellent pronunciation, too. Um, congratulations to you, Rosemary, and also Miley. Um, that de developed your uh, activity uh, tonight. I don't know if there is any other uh, uh, any other group who wants to participate with the activity that uh, it was for Thursday, but uh, uh, as I mentioned on Thursday, I was just going to give you uh, an opportunity for uh, tonight class. So any of you? Nobody else? Nobody else? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, we are going to uh, move on to um, the part correspond um, to the platform. So if you remember, we have been working there, some exercises. Um, last uh, time we're discussing about the lesson objectives and also the, the content that we're uh, taking into consideration the development of this course. Um, it was in the section number four. And um, if you remember, well, we watched uh, a conversation that it was, this neighborhood has changed. That was the name. Uh, by the way, are, are you um, seeing my, my screen? Do you see my screen? English course, Mm -hmm. That's it. You know? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, oh, okay. Um, well, I, I, word, I was just telling you um, yeah, something related to this, uh, the, the conversation that we already watched, the section number four. Um, but we, we, we're going to be uh, working on past, present, and future tenses. I want to see how they are used. Um, we're going to move on to the lesson. Uh, 4.2 because we're going to um, watch a video that it's related about this. If you see, um, we're going to uh, be discussing about time contrast, uh, then we're going to uh, move on to a, a pronunciation part and also we're going to be checking the conditional sentences with if clause. I will be explaining you each of them. Um, if, if well, I hope to finish this this class because we have to move on to section number five. Uh, well, in section number four uh, point two. There we are going to uh, yeah, as you say there, uh, as you see there, uh, the lesson object. It says at the end of this class you will be able to describe events using time contrast between the past, present, and future. So let's see how does it work. Okay, so. Uh, let's watch this video and then we're going to be discussing how we'll be uh, amplifying the information related to this topic, okay? Uh, please pay attention. Hello everyone, before you watch our video, we want you to write on our discussion box expressions that you already know which are used in the past, present, and future. Time contrasts. Past. A few years ago, not many people lived here. Present. These days, the population is growing so fast. Future. Soon, there will be a lot of shopping malls. People used to shop at grocery stores. Today, people shop at supermarkets. In 20 years, people might buy groceries by computer. 50 years ago, people walked everywhere. Nowadays, people drive their cars instead. In the future, people are going to use cars even more. We noticed you wrote sometime expressions related to past, present, and future. Well done. 
Now let's talk a bit about time contrast. This helps us to talk about perhaps a same situation that we have lived over the years and we want to make reference since it happened, taking it to our present and imagining it in a future. The trick here is for us to use the verbs properly in its right tense along with time expressions. Let's go over the chart. In the first column we talk about past and we use time expressions like a few years ago or people used to or 50 years ago and our verbs are in past. We used lived and walked. Let's move on to the present and here we use these days, today or nowadays and of course our verbs are is growing, shop and drive which are in the present. Last but not least we have our future using expressions such as soon, in 20 years, in the future. Therefore we use verbs in future, will be, might buy, are going to use. Time contrast is easy to use, just double check on your verbs. Think about it as one sentence per tense. We will now give you more time expressions that you may use with each tense. Past expressions. At that time, in the past, then. Present expressions. Currently, in the meantime, now. Future expressions. In the next couple of years, next in the near future. Now we want you to write a short description about how has your life changed using the expressions below. Make sure you do it and present it to your teacher to make sure you did it right. Okay, good. Um, well, guys, there you uh, watch, well, uh, as you see sentences in past, present, and future. Um, and also, we just uh, take a look. Uh, a few today. years ago, not many. Apologies. Okay. Uh, here, we take a look to the time contrast and uh, some time, uh, words for time expression. So, in this case, uh, when we use a few years, a uh, 50 years ago, we are referring and we're going to use, uh, 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 as you see there, uh, sometimes uh, sentences in past, because these sentences can be like a uh, simple past, also past continue, or also past perfect, okay? In present, uh, we're going to find the same, right? Uh, there, there you're going to have find uh, some time expressions in which we are going to uh, take a, a, a little bit care here because we are going to be, if we use this kind of time expression like these days, today, nowadays, or sentence is going to be in present. And, and this sentence will be simple present, present continuous, okay? Um, and also, uh, because we here with with all these sentences, we what, what we're doing is to contrast uh, contrasting information. Uh, we can use future too in order to do that. So in this case, the time expression so only twenty years in the future. Uh, with after all these expressions, we're gonna be using a uh, future tense. In this case, simple a simple future, a uh, future continuous. Okay. Uh, and uh, do, 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 just to uh, do contrast here, um, like with information uh, that, that you can think, for instance, uh, if we want to talk about computers, okay, uh, what we can say it in the past about computer, probably that uh, what I guess uh, 50 years ago we uh, didn't have computers, okay? I guess it's more than that, but we're just taking a, a, a period of time. Guess I'm not sure about that, but um, by the way, this is just for the example here. Uh, 15 years ago, uh, people uh, didn't have computers. Nowadays, uh, all people have some mobile device. In the future, so, uh, people probably are going to use chips instead of uh, mobile devices in order to communicate with others. 
Uh, if you notice there, what we are doing with this sentence uh, is just to contrast, uh, contrasting, I, I mean, uh, information related to a specific topic. Uh, in this case, uh, technology or computers, uh, the way you want to call it, uh, there we're going to just use time expressions like this. Uh, there are more time expressions than the one that we are just checking here in, in, in this slide because uh, we can uh, use different ones. It is not just for a long period of time. Uh, we can use it for things that have already happened probably in an hour ago or in a week ago. Okay, so in order to contrast something uh, very specific, okay, uh, there you have, well, at the end of, the, of this video, there you have some uh, extra um, time expressions in order to use in sentences. What I want you to do is to create um, a sentence using these time expressions. Uh, for instance, we can use at that time uh, in the past then. No, so we're gonna see that uh, for present, we have currently in, in the meantime, now, and in the future, we have a, I mean, here, in the future, um, in the next couple of year, next, in the near future, uh, okay, in a month. So uh, as you know, there are many time expressions that we can use before a sentence, before a, to use. I mean, uh, before using uh, a, a sentence in a specific a, a time, okay? if we talk about past, present, or future. Um, take a, 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 a screenshot or, or take a, a photo to these uh, time expressions and you're going to create just one sentence. Uh, you decide what you want to contrast in your sentence. Uh, could be whatever thing, things that you probably you have been working on uh, previously, uh, something related to your job or any information you want to include in your conversation. Uh, but we have to use the time expressions like uh, the ones that we have here. So uh, we're going to start with um, pass, okay? Take a screenshot here, ready? Yes? Yes. Okay, let's move on to present. Take a screenshot too, because we're going to use these time expressions in order to create your sentence. It's going to be just one sentence. Ready? Yes or not? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, the future time expressions. There you have. This is the last one. Uh, as I said before, right? What we are going to do uh, for the ones that join are joining uh, right now to the video conference, what we are going to do is to use uh, the time expressions that we have in this video in section uh, four point three, uh, and we're going to use one time expressions. In order to contrast a past, present, and future things, you decide what you want to contrast. So, but we have to use one time expression for each sentence. Okay. So let's start. You get to have five minutes in order to complete this activity. Then you are going to be reading your sentence. Okay. Is it clear what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, okay. What about the rest of you? We are 16 people here, but I just listened one. Just give a thumbs up if everything is okay. Okay, thumbs up. Thumbs up. 
you can use the icons uh, here in Zoom in order to, okay, Carla, good. You can, as I said before, you can use the icon in order to say that everything is okay, just giving a thumbs up or thumbs down, okay? Uh, so there are uh, two thumbs up, okay? Good, excellent. Okay, so we're going to have five minutes right now. Start with um, 8.24, we're gonna be sharing our sentence at 8.30. By the way, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Okay, guys, I, I just need to mention that um, you need to write one sentence uh, in past, present, and future, okay? Using one time expression. Remember that uh, what the, the idea here is to contrast the information in past, present, and future, okay? So that means that we're going to create three sentences. Uh, Maximo, you need to include two different sentences in order to contrast your information, okay? Um, Alicia, too. Okay. Okay, uh, I, just, I just watched, was um, uh, checking the sentence that Maximo sent. Maximo, uh, just let me tell you that, uh, because we're contrasting information, uh, what we are going to do is to use the same information. The only thing that's going to change is the uh, um, time expression, also the idea of your sentence, but using the the the, the same, uh, I mean, uh, information in past and present. For instance, uh, if you're talking about cars, uh, your sentence in present must be uh, related to cars and also your sentence in past must be related to cars too, okay? Is it, I, I don't know if it is clear. Okay, okay. Okay, good. in the near future.
future. Now. Uh, okay, guys, time is over. Uh, when I shared the sentences here, uh, I don't know if, uh, if anyone's ready in order to read your sentencing. Past, present, and future. Volunteer who wants to read the conversation. I mean the conversation and <laughs> the sentence. Okay. Now one. We don't have volunteers. Okay. So if we don't have volunteers, I'll, I'll be asking you directly. Uh, let's start with um. Let me see, Rodrigo. Rodrigo, you there? Yes. Okay, Rodrigo, uh, can you please read your sentences? Okay. Uh, wait. Uh, okay, uh, now the cell phone charge fast. Okay. Uh, and the... mm -hmm. In the next month, we are going to buy Christmas presents. A mm -hmm. few years ago, the gas was cheap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it, the, the, the sentences are created correctly if we talk about grammar, but the idea is not the same that we're sharing here. Remember that uh, when we're going to contrast something, we're going to use the same information. Uh, for instance, if you are talking about a uh, Christmas gift, you have to use the same idea in a past and also present. Okay. Uh, for instance, uh, in, well, 15 years ago, uh, people gave uh, Gerald Lee for a gift in Christmas, something like that. Right. Okay. Now, people give. Uh, I don't know. Well, the, the same idea. Yeah, I don't know if we, if you understand. So that that's that, that we're going to be using the same idea in order to create each sentence. We'll talk about Christmas gift gonna be in past, present, and future too. The same uh, the, the the same if, the thing that I was mentioned to Maximo some 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 minutes ago. If he is talking about cars, it's gonna be keep talking about cars in, in past, present, and future. Okay? The okay. sentences are good. The sentences are good. But we have to keep the same idea. Uh, the same idea, else? okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Any other volunteer? Uh, no, okay. Let's start with uh, Alicia. Yes, I'm okay, Alicia. here. Okay, uh, Alicia, uh, read your sentences. Okay. Uh, in the next weekend, we are going to camp. A few days ago, the new camping park opened. Nowadays, I go to buy a camping tent. Okay. Okay, good. Excellent, excellent. So we're keeping the same idea there. Next week, we're going to camp a few days ago. Then you can be But I guess the, the only thing that we have to, to just to, to uh, take care of there is that we have to use an order uh, because we always going to start with past, then present, and at the end, future. Okay. This is the okay. only uh, advice that I can give you to you. The rest of the information, the idea, okay, is the same. Good. Anyone else? Uh, Juan Cruz. Juan, are you there? Okay, teacher. Sorry to be late, but I try to to give the sentences. Now we we hear about the um, cup of the world. In a few days, we will see the first game. And what is the other that you are asking? 
uh, pass, I guess the pass is missing, but mm. I, I will explain you a little bit later. Okay, go ahead. Uh, um, uh, um, if our uh, favorite team lose the game, um, no, okay. Okay, one, but don't worry, don't worry. Okay. No, don't worry, don't worry. I'm going to show you something because okay. I guess everybody uh, just captured the idea about using how to use. I have the idea, yes, but, but I, 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 I'm sorry, I came late. <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. But but I, what I want you to to tell you and, and well share this information with everybody here. Um, um, is the uses of the time expressions and also the sentences that we're going to be using in order to contrast the information. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> just take a look at the examples that we have here. A few years ago, not many people live here. These days, the population is growing so fast. Soon, soon there will be a lot of shopping malls. Uh, if you see each sentence, um, they are talking about a specific and a specific thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And what we can say about this, the, the, because we're, con we're uh, what we are doing here is to contrast information. We are talking about how and a specific place is rowing, okay? Uh, because here we are saying like uh, that, if, if we take information here, uh, we're saying that in a specific place, we don't know because it is not mentioned there, uh, not many people live here, it says, but we don't know where, right? So we're gonna say it in Usulutan, okay? So mm -hmm. in Usulutan, uh, not many people live here. Okay, in present, the population is growing so fast. And in the future, there will be a lot of shopping malls. Why? Because uh, the 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 progress that we're getting, that we are seeing uh, about how that is specific place. In this case, we, we want to say that Solutan. So how Solutan is robbing, but it's the same idea. Even though that there are like different uh, different information there, but we keep the same idea. The, the thing happened. In the second uh, example there, it says people used to shop at grocery store. Today, people shop at supermarket. Markets, I mean. In 20 years, people may buy groceries by computer. If you see there, we're, talk we're keeping the same idea in order to contrast the information in past, present, and future. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's just take a look at the last one. 50 years ago, people walk everywhere. Nowadays, people drive their cars instead. In the future, people are going to use cars even more. So uh, the idea here is transportation, okay? We are just keeping the same idea in order to contrast the same information. I don't know if, if it is clear here. Uh, if, if not, I will switch to, to Spanish in order to explain this part. Uh, cuando nosotros utilizamos eh, los, los time contrast, oh, en este caso, las expresiones de tiempo con las oraciones en pasado, presente y futuro, eh, nosotros, eh, para hacer un contraste, siempre debemos mantener una misma idea. ¿sí? E, independientemente si la, la, la oración pues, este, no hable exactamente, exactamente lo mismo, nosotros damos a entender una misma idea. Eh, de lo que estamos este, nosotros eh, tomando en cuenta. Por ejemplo, decíamos en la número uno eh, que hablaba sobre el progreso este, que ha tenido X lugar. ¿sí? Esa es como, como la idea principal. En la número dos, eh, estamos hablando sobre compras. ¿sí? ¿Acerca de qué? De, eh, de, de los grocery stores. ¿okay? Hablamos de que este, eh, en el pasado las personas solían... Este, comprar en los grocery stores, ahora ellos compran en supermercados y en el futuro, ¿qué pasa? Ellos podrían 
este, eh, comprar all grocery things usando una computadora. ¿Sí? Eh, lo que estamos viendo ahí es solamente contrastando eh, eventos que ocurrían en el pasado, eventos que ocurren ahora y eventos que podrían ocurrir en el futuro. ¿Sí? Porque son, este, y, y digo podría porque este, no necesariamente eh, van, a, van a suceder de esa manera. ¿Sí? Eh, lo que estamos haciendo aquí es, es tomando información, tomando un tema específico, un tema de discusión y este, comparando qué viene el pasado, qué hay ahora, qué habrá en el futuro. ¿Sí? No sé si me doy a entender. Yes. Yes. Yes, sí. Vaya, solo, solo para ser un poquito más claro, básicamente estos tres tiempos forman una sola oración, ¿sí? Eh, cuando nosotros eh, vamos a, 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 a compartir información con alguien y, y utilizamos time contrast, uh, básicamente nosotros utilizamos los tres tiempos en una sola oración. Son tres oraciones independientes, sí, pero la información que vamos a compartir se va a mantener en una, digamos, eh, tal vez no, no, no oración así, porque una oración está compuesta de sujeto, verbo y complemento, digámosle este, eh, un solo eh, párrafo, ¿sí? Porque está compuesta de tres, de tres eh, oraciones, ¿sí? Eh, ahora, yo les decía que construyeran este, por ahí una oración haciendo uso de los... Eh, time expressions, tomando en cuenta uno de los time expressions de en pasado, en presente y en futuro, ¿sí? Eh, las oraciones que ustedes construyeron están buenas. Lo único que este, eh, yo veía por ahí es que eh, la idea no la mantenía, ¿sí? Si nosotros comenzamos hablando de carros, vamos a, a, a terminar hablando de carros y vamos a mantener el orden, pasado, presente y futuro, ¿sí? Eso es todo. Uh, we're going to move uh, because I, I want you, uh, I just want to do a review about simple present, simple past. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Y parece ser que hubo como un corte. No sé qué fue lo último que escucharon. Eh, mantener la idea de algo. Ahí está ahí. Ah, ok, so. Lo del eh, carro. Lo del carro, ok. So, um, eh, I, I was telling you that eh, it's supposed that you're gonna... I'm going to switch this one. La, la idea era de que nosotros utilizáramos un time expression por cada una de las oraciones. Recordemos que este... Eh, cuando nosotros vamos a compartir este tipo de, de, de información de los time contrasts, nosotros este, siempre vamos a mantener el mismo orden. Pasado, presente, futuro. Y eh, digamos que esto lo estaríamos compartiendo en una sola oración. O sola oración, decimos, pero eh, llamémosle no oración, sino eh, un pequeño párrafo, porque está compuesto de tres oraciones diferentes que comparten la misma idea. Eh, siempre nosotros... Vamos a mantener eso, ¿sí? Pasado, presente y futuro. Para mostrar información de este tipo. Ahora, este, los vamos a mover. Eh, we're going to move on and we're going to uh, just do a review about the simple past, eh, simple present, also uh, simple future. And as I said before, this is an easy topic because you have been discussing, you have been working on, uh, on these topics before. And probably this is like the most easy one that, that we have in English. Uh, let me just share uh, a whiteboard in order to explain this part because it's going to be so quickly, okay? But um, if you think that I'm uh, going so fast uh, in this, uh, sharing this information to you, just let me know, okay? And I, I will stop and I will be uh, explaining a, a little bit better each tense that we're gonna be checking uh, today. Okay, we're going to start with simple past. Okay, there are two different simple past in English. Uh, there is simple past using uh, regular and irregular verbs. 
And there is another simple past with B, okay? Simple past using bird to be. Okay. There are two things here. Simple pass and simple pass using bird to be. In simple pass, uh, in order to construct a sentence, in order to construct a sentence, uh, simple pass, we wanna be using uh, subject class bird in pass, bird in pass, class a couple. Wanna say it, that this structure is, it is going to be an affirmative sentence. Okay, this is going to be your affirmative sentence. Uh, in past, we wanna be using uh, this structure, subject, verb, and complement. Can you give me an example uh, uh, using simple past in an affirmative sentence? Me, teacher. Okay, go ahead. Okay. In the past, people used to write letters. Okay. People used to write letters. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is people. Okay, uh, people, <laughs> give, give me just one moment. Okay, I'm ready to continue. Okay, there you have a, the affirmative sentence. Uh, this is the subject, a verb to pass and complement. Uh, if you see that in affirmative sentence, it's gonna be like this, okay? Uh, verb in pass. This is the only change that we're going to have in simple pass uh, because uh, we can use what is called regular and irregular verbs you remember, it. Do, do you know the difference between regular and irregular verbs? Guys, do you know the difference between using regular and regular verbs? Yes, teacher. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, good. So uh, in this case, uh, Wanna say that regular verse as the one that, that finish with ed and regular verse as the one that change all the structure to in the simple past, right? So now uh, in this case we can use a, a either a regular or irregular verbs in order to create sentence like this. Uh, we can create a negative sentence or negative statement. We're going to use a different structure uh, like this, okay? Because in negative sentences, we're going to be using uh, always a subject because in, in English we have, we must use a subject for all sentences that for imperatives, but uh, with all the rest of the sentences, we're gonna be using subject. In this case, because it is negative, uh, we're gonna use an auxiliary Bird. Okay. Pass. Bird. This bird is going to be a base form. Bird. 
base form of the bird as a complement. Okay, there you have. So we have these uh, two uh, forms. This is just for simple pass, okay? Affirmative sentence, subject, verb, pass, complement. In negative sentence, always simple pass, gonna be subject plus did not plus the base form of the word uh, plus a complement, okay? And uh, if we think in a uh, sentence, when I say like, I'm going to, do, to use one. He okay, did not study for the exam. There you have. He did not study for the exam. We can also uh, contract uh, contract this this phrase. Say didn't instead of okay. Instead of not, he didn't or oh, he did not study for the exam. Period at the end. It's always. Okay, we have, this is another sentence. He did not study for the exam. Uh, this is going to be our negative sentence. Also, we have a, the interrogative. In this case, we're going to do a switch because we're gonna be using the auxiliary, did, class, Vert, uh, I mean subject, class, vert, base form, right? Class, complement. And, and we're going to add a question mark that again, this is mandatory for interrogative sentences. Okay, there we have. Uh, this is our, these are the three forms that we want to be using in simple past, uh, in affirmative, negative, and interrogative. If we want to uh, just change the, uh, the information from the affirmative sentence, we want to, you want to use this. Did, uh, I want to say, uh, he study for the exam. Question mark at the end, okay? Same information uh, that the previous uh, sentence there. Did he study for the exam? This is just a question that we wanna be answering with. Okay, is it clear what I'm saying? Hello? Hola, es que se fue, se cayó un ratito la, la, la llamada. Oh. Mm -hmm. do, do, do you check uh, the last I speak white screen. Mister? Este es blanco, teacher, todo. Oh, my port is clean. Sentence. Sí, es que lo, 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 lo borré para explicarlo a otro. Pero no sé si, si lograron ver la última, la estructura. Yes, teacher. Ok, good. So, básicamente esas son como las tres este, estructuras que nosotros tenemos en, en, el, en el caso del este, pasado simple. En las tres formas. Eh, nosotros tenemos afirmativo negativo e interrogativo. Eh, en el caso de, de, del este, pasado simple, la única este, situación que nos vamos a encontrar un poco compleja es en identificar cómo vamos a escribir el verbo en pasado en forma afirmativa, porque tenemos verbos regulares y verbos irregulares. Ese es el único, eh, eh, digamos, la única dificultad. El resto solamente es manejar la estructura de cómo 
compartir ideas, cómo eh, construir ideas haciendo uso del pasado simple. El día de mañana nosotros vamos a estar estudiando el presente simple y también el futuro simple. Y como les digo, esto solamente es un repaso, porque creo yo, y corríjanme si no es así, eh, que ustedes ya han visto esta información. Yes, teacher. Sí, yes, excelente, teacher. excelente. Este, eh, entonces, a, ahorita nos vamos a quedar con esto, lastimosamente, porque el tiempo corre, vuela, este, y pues ya solo nos quedan tres minutos y quiero, quiero este, dedicarlos a otra cosa para preguntarles un par de cosas. Eh, nos vamos a quedar hasta aquí, vamos a continuar el día de mañana este, con, la, eh, con, con la siguiente estructura, que es el presente simple. Es uno de los más fáciles y luego pasamos al futuro simple. Ok, dicho. Eh, bien. Lo que les quería preguntar es lo siguiente, chicos. Este, ¿Alguno ha tenido problemas con la plataforma? Eh, referente a los ejercicios. ¿Ha presentado algún inconveniente? ¿Hay algún ejercicio que no hayan completado? Este, no sé, ¿algo que, eh, que se les haya dificultado a ustedes con la plataforma? ¿Que lo podamos resolver ahorita? No. ¿Sonia no? no. ¿Los demás? No, Tisho. No. Vaya. Entonces... No, sí. Bye, excelente. Estamos bien entonces. Eh, eh, les decía, y eso lo, 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 lo dije al principio de la videoconferencia, este, por los que se unieron después, el día miércoles no tenemos clase. Sin embargo, eh, esa clase nosotros la vamos a recuperar el día viernes. Y prácticamente, este, bueno, ya con esta clase solo nos quedan tres sesiones más, la del martes, la del jueves y la del viernes, y finalizamos el módulo. Yo les voy a estar compartiendo a ustedes un par de enlaces solamente para que vayamos este, estudiando un poco más. Si a ustedes les interesa pues, seguir aprendiendo eh, el idioma, eh, yo les voy a compartir un par de enlaces para que practiquen. Este, tengo por ahí un grupo, no es mío, sino que lo busqué en internet. Un grupo de Discord en el cual este, ustedes pueden unirse y este, ahí van a encontrar personas este, que están interesadas en aprender español y eh, como ustedes interesados en aprender inglés, pueden aprovechar también para este, intercambiar pues, eh, eh, una conversación en español este, o una conversación en inglés eh, con otra este, persona. Y pueden sacarle provecho porque este, van a estar expuestos a, a, a una este, comunicación más directa con alguien que, que hable este, el idioma inglés. ¿Sí? Eh, se los voy a pasar por ahí eh, el, el enlace del disco. Como les digo, no es un grupo este, mío, sino que eh, es un grupo de, eh, que encontré en internet este, y que pues, a algunos les ha servido para poder eh, practicar un poco el idioma. ¿De acuerdo? Gracias, teacher. Muy bien, eso sería este, todo por ahora. Nos estaríamos viendo el día de mañana a la misma hora. Este, así que de momento pasen una feliz noche. Cuídense. Bendiciones a todos. Nos vemos. Gracias. 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 Grac